This is Dr. Dean. We discussed myopia development and prevention last time. Today, let's talk about treatment and control of myopia progression. First of all, let's review again what is myopia. You can watch our previous video on myopia and its prevention, where I discussed in details on how myopia develops. In a nutshell, myopia is the abnormal elongation of the eyeball causing the image to be focused in front of the retina and blurry. The retinal complications associated with myopia, such as retinal detachment and myopic macular degeneration, are also directly related to this elongation of the axial length. Therefore, the goal of controlling myopia is to slow down or stop the growth of the axial length of the eye. Please note, that once an eyeball becomes longer, it will not shrink, much like a kid will only grow taller and not shorter. So the best outcome in myopia control is actually a halt in myopia development, but there will be no reversal. The best we can do is to stop it from growing. That will be a 100% success in myopia control. Exactly because of this, the earlier we start controlling myopia, the better the outcome is. Well, we discussed toward the end of the lecture last time that many ways are not effective in controlling myopia, such as warm compress, vitamin supplement, blue filter glasses, and so on. Today, we will talk about ways that have been proven by research to be effective in slowing down myopia development. Uh, there are currently two effective approaches for myopia control optical and pharmacological. Let's look at the optical first. We have to introduce the concept of peripheral hyperopic defocus first. When we wear myopic glasses, the light will be focused on the retina again in the center. However, the light in the periphery actually focuses behind the retina, as shown in this figure. You can see this is peripheral light focusing behind the retina. Uh, even though the central light does focus on the retina itself. Remember that in myopia, the light focuses in front of the retina. So these two are exactly opposite. The hyperopic defocus will trick the retina into thinking that the eye needs to grow longer to catch the light behind it, resulting in eyes continue to grow longer. So optically, if we can design the lens that eliminates this peripheral hyperopic defocus, we can control eye growth and myopia development. There are indeed lenses that can achieve this. The second is via pharmacological intervention. Atropine has been used for a long time to control myopia. The exact mechanism is not yet known, but may have something to do with controlling the retina and choroid thickness. Interestingly, even though atropine is a strong cycloplegic, meaning it paralyzes the ciliary muscle, this is not considered to be how it controls myopia. So optically, uh, the most successful lens to control myopia is orthokeratology or ortho-K lens. This is a type of hard contact lens to be worn in the eyes during sleeping at night. Multifocal soft contact lenses are also effective in controlling myopia progression, about 40 uh, 45%. Multifocal glasses traditionally have been less successful in controlling myopia progression, with only about 20% effect in slowing it down. However, a new design by Hoya recently has been shown to reduce myopia progression by 59%, and we will discuss this lens first. Uh, these are called mild smart glasses using a design called defocus incorporated multiple segments. I personally tried these on at the AOA meeting last year and was impressed with how well preserved the visual quality was, considering that the center of the lens is engraved with numerous tiny grids. Since this is a pair of glasses, children of any age can use them. The only thing is that it's quite new and we're waiting for independent research to verify its efficacy. Now let's move on to soft multifocal contact lenses. Uh, there are several brands of similar lenses out there in the market, but the MySight is the only FDA-approved contact lens 
specifically for the purpose of controlling myopia. This is a daily disposable lens, so very suitable for kids who may not be compliant with contact lens cleaning and disinfection at night. The lenses are worn like regular contact lenses, which can correct for distance vision up to minus seven diopters. And by wearing them, reducing peripheral hyperopic defocus, thus slowing myopia progression. Lastly, let's talk about Ortho-K. These are night contact lenses. When they are put on the eye, it causes a temporary redistribution of the corneal epithelial cells, thereby temporarily changing the shape of the cornea for about 12 to 16 hours. That is why during the day, you can see well without additional glasses or contact lenses. This corneal reshaping also reduces peripheral hyperopic defocus, therefore can slow myopia progression. In order to completely be lens-free, the amount of myopia should not exceed minus 6 diopters and astigmatism not exceed 1.75 diopters. Because it is a hard contact lens that is worn at night, there can be issues, especially when used in children. Lens care and hygiene protocols should be strictly followed. Lenses have to be soaked in designated solutions Definitely no tap water or other fluids. Corneal infection is the biggest concern for night-wearing contact lenses. However, research has shown that infection risk is very low. This lens can be used for at least one year, so that saves cost somewhat compared to daily disposable contact lenses. So the pros for Ortho-K lens is good for myopia control and lens-free lifestyle during the day. The cons are that the fitting is really expensive and out of pocket, and you have to follow lens care and hygiene closely. But really, this is true for any type of contact lens wear. Lastly, because it is a hard lens, it is quite uncomfortable when initially wearing. Fortunately, you go sleep right afterwards and do not need to blink where the most discomfort comes from. Also, most children or adults get used to the sensation after a few weeks. Now, let's discuss eye drop treatment to slow myopia progression. Atropine was originally extracted from um, a, a tropa belladonna plant and used in medicine for a variety of reasons. 1% atropine is available for use to dilate pupils. People know about this effect in myopia for over a century. However, the side effect is difficult to tolerate. For example, after one drop of 1% atropine, eyes will remain dilated for two to three weeks, making people sensitive to light and unable to focus and see near closely. In addition, previous studies have shown a myopia rebound effect after dis discontinuation of treatment. So it is not an ideal option for controlling myopia, since this process needs to be going on for years and years. Recent years have seen research on lower doses of atropine to control myopia successfully and without the rebound effect. 0.01% atropine is quite tolerable. Few kids have significantly dilated pupils or blurry near vision. And data so far support the use for up to five years without adverse effect. However, this is not yet approved by the US FDA so a doctor's prescription is needed, and it can only be made in a compounding pharmacy. It can be costly. In cases where 0.01% atropine does not control myopia development sufficiently, higher doses may be considered. Again, compounding is needed. Finally, a summary of these selected promising methods of controlling myopia progression. The mouse smart glasses are nice, as no contact lenses are involved but we're still waiting for more data on this one. My site, multifocal soft contact lenses are the only FDA approved method of myopia control, but it requires kids to be cooperative for contact lens use. Ortho K offers lens free lifestyle, but it is also a contact lens that requires kids and parents to follow lens hygiene and care closely. Lodos atropine drops are easy to use, but kids still need to wear glasses during the day, and we only have safety data for five years at the moment. 
Lastly, all of these treatments can be expensive. Prevention is always better than treatment. Sunshine is free. Please increase the outdoor time for your kids and prevent myopia from developing in the first place. That's it for this talk. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe and like us, and feel free to post questions and comments down below. For more educational articles about the eyes and health of the eyes, uh, please visit our website at www.bostoneyeyeblink.com and contact us with um, an email or leave a message on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.